What's up guys and welcome back to Tiki Boy Furies. The new trailer for Camp Cretaceous Season 3 has been released onto YouTube and man does it show us a lot about this new season. We see that the kids are still stranded on Isla Nubla and are living in fear of the E750 hybrid that has escaped out of Indian secret tunnels where it was being kept. I've got nothing else to say, let's get into the trailer. So the trailer begins with all six kids on a raft paddling away from Isla Nublar. They're then hit by a massive tidal wave and washed back up onto Isla Nublar. After this, we see the kids walking through the jungle, which probably takes place right after their raft gets destroyed. I don't mean the bags them or anything, but I don't understand what they were expecting anyways. Their raft looked like it was made out of paddle pop sticks, and where were they expecting to go? The only place close to Isla Nublar is probably Costa Rica, Site B, or one of the five deaths. We then see the kids return to Camp Cretaceous and Brooklyn crosses off something on a chalkboard, which I am pretty sure was their plan to get off the island. We can also see that the kids have crossed off several other plans off of the chalkboard, which tells us that this, the kids have tried several attempts to get off the island. The next few scenes show Darius and Brooklyn climbing down what looks like an elevator shaft, and the rest of the kids are crawling through some air conditioning vents. If you pay attention, you'll notice that the kids are walking through the air conditioning vents very slowly, implying that they are being pursued by a predatory dinosaur, or just any dinosaur in general. After this, we also see the kids opening the doors of the 1993 Jurassic Park Visitor Center, which was also found by Zack and Gray in 2015's Jurassic World. Many people keep saying that the kids are trying to find something at the visitor center, but I just think they're hiding from a dinosaur, or they're just using the visitor center as an easter egg. Next we see the kids walking down a corridor with some of the tackiest wall decorations I have ever seen in my life. We also see the shadow of the Monolophosaurus that looks like it's about to attack the kids. Most people keep saying that the kids are in the 1993 Jurassic Park visitor center, but it just looks a bit too clean to be that. My opinion is that this is one of the corridors in one of the hotels on Main Street because it looks pretty clean, but the only thing wrong with that is why would, they get, why would the kids go back to Main Street when the T-Rex is taken over? I haven't looked at any maps of this one, Nubla, so I'm not sure if my next thought is correct, but the kids could be in another apartment building on Isla Nubla. This scene could also explain why the kids seem to be crawling through air conditioning vents and climbing down an elevator shaft. Maybe they've been trapped in a hotel and they need to get away from the Monolophosaurus so they escape through the air conditioning vents and down the elevator shaft. The next shot shows Sammy and Brooklyn walking into what looks like a maintenance shed when they stumble on a bash down door with the word E750, which means that the E750 hybrid has busted out of the facility and is now loose on the island. We then see Sat Brooklyn turn on Dr. Wu's laptop and begin playing one of Wu's blogs which documents information regarding E750, aka the Scorpius Rex. In his blog, Wu explains that E750 was extremely aggressive and straight out of this we see Wu gets attacked by what looks like E750. This probably shows us how E750 ended up being put on ice because I'm guessing that ACU tranquilized it and Dr. Wu just froze it in the container where it was being kept. It's shocking to know that Dr. Wu had a near-death experience, but what's even crazier is the fact that he survived this attack. I don't think there would have been any guards or soldiers in the laboratory with him because he was creating a blog about E750 and E750 was being kept a secret from the rest of the park. Even the fact that E750 managed to get to Dr. Wu is crazy because in this shot we see that E750 could be about the size of a baryonyx and it just looks a bit too big to be kept in the lab. Because this hybrid was being kept a secret from Claire Deering and Simon Mizrani, then I believe it would have been housed in the engine secret tunnels. From the looks of it, this may be Wu's secret laboratory where he created E750 and the Indominus Rex, which would also be located in the engine secret tunnels. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's pretty crazy to know that this hybrid was able to bust out of a high-tech storage facility and track down Dr. Wu to kill him. What, that's crazier than the time the Indominus Rex figured out it was being tracked on thermal technology and used it against everybody work at, everyone working at the park. Jesus, if this thing gets any smarter, it's going to make its own atomic bomb or something. Well, he's in the internet. What if he decides to access something a little more exciting? Nuclear codes. Nuclear codes. We also hear Brooklyn explaining to Darius that she and Sammy found a lab where Dr. Wu was creating the hybrids and they needed to get off the island. The next shot shows Blue jumping onto a Jurassic World Jeep, which is being driven by Kenji, while Darius and Yosemina are hitching a ride with him. 
Now, I don't mean to get critical again, but for some strange reason, everywhere the kids go, they're able to find an operating vehicle. And why have the kids chosen Kenji to drive? He nearly killed all of them in Season 1 when he took control of the ACU van and nearly drove them off a cliff. If you think about it, Kenji is very similar to Simon Mazrani. Mazrani was one of the worst helicopter pilots I had ever seen, but for some reason he was chosen to pilot the helicopter to go shoot down the Indominus Rex, and he lasted like five minutes or something. Focus on the controls. The key to a happy life is to accept you are never actually in control. Yeah, I don't have a hard time believing that you have zero control. Sorry, I got distracted for a bit there. Back to the video. In this scene, we can also see that Darius is holding what looks like a tranquilizer gun, but he suddenly drops it when Blue begins bashing her head on the windscreen. We then see Yasmina running through the jungle and jumping over a ditch. In this scene, she seems to be holding something which looks like something very important because Yasmina seems to be holding onto it pretty tightly. After this, we see Sammy and Brooklyn flying in a paragliding suit while being pursued by a flock of Dimorphodons. Darius seems to be on the ground and calling out to the girls to turn left and right. Now, the one thing that confuses me about this scene is the fact that Sammy and Brooklyn can hear everything Darius is saying, despite being so far off the ground. I think they must have some sort of communication device with them, like the headsets the kids wore when they drove the gyrospheres. And the last part of this scene shows a Dimorphodon chasing Sammy and Kenji through some automatic door closing doors and getting hit in the face when the doors close. And the last part of the trailer shows the kids at Camp Cretaceous, but they are being pursued by the E750 hybrid. The kids are somehow electrified a fence around the camp. Brooke and Kenji and Yaz are hiding behind a table. Ben has a spear, Sammy's got a shovel, and Darius seems to have Brooklyn's baseball bat. E750 then rubs itself against the electric fence, and the very last shot in the trailer shows E750's head behind the fence and staring up at the kids in the treehouse. Now that I'm looking at its head, it looks exactly E750 looks exactly like a mixture between the Indominus Rex and the Indoraptor. It has the very same quills as both the Indominus and the Indoraptor, but its head looks more like that of the Indominus, while it has a very dark skin palette similar to the Indoraptor. Well, I think that wraps up everything I have to say. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on good videos like this one. Bye for now and I'll catch you in the next one.